have been um, in a series for four weeks or so and really in a direct experience of transition together here. Um, this morning, uh, we're giving some closure to the series. If you've just come for the first time in weeks, don't worry. Uh, the ultimate point will be made simple. Your transition just happened faster. <laughs> uh, I've rearranged the service a little bit today. Uh, the, the band and I have in uh, in the interest of uh, having this morning's service uh, revolve around uh, a song. And um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up so you'll know what to expect and you won't be sitting there, you know, how the mind is, you know, it starts doing this. And so in just a moment, I'm going to do what we might call our time of meditation, take us down into the silent source, the still source that's always <clears throat> already right here, right now. And then rather than a formal closing to the meditation with the, uh, you know, the cue, amen, what will happen instead is out of the silence, the band will begin to sing this song. And then as we move through uh, the song, I'm going to let, uh, we're going to be sort of inviting you to participate. The lyrics are right up over my head. You'll be able to join into them with them. And so that'll begin to set the tone. Then we'll have a little conversation from Mark, some pointers, some words. We'll sum up our series. We'll sing the song again together. I'm inviting us to participate. Notice it says the song starts with we. And that's not just the band or me and the band. That's we. I have a, I don't know what happened. That what happens that makes people wind up sort of being spiritually called one more than another at a given moment in time. We're all the same being, but some of us just really kind of get thrown in, thrown in the thrasher and there's no other answer. And I guess that was this path here. And all I know when it comes to this, this work where I stand here and speak is, is that I, the idea that I'm doing anything from a set point of separation or because I'm some special guy is ridiculous to me. Nothing happens without all of us. And ultimately, a transitional phase of a church means a, a certain vibration begins to call us a consciousness, a new consciousness, if, if I might, a new earth is forming, and we, we all are the instruments of that. Our consciousness is forming and shaping it. So it's in that sense that I invite you to participate. If you're not a really good singer, then mouth the words like <laughs> most of us not so good singers do or sing them really low so nobody knows we might be off key. That's okay. The thing is the intention. Let's step into the intention together. That said... Um, you'll receive instructions. I'll invite you. What did we finally decide? That we're going to have them sing just the chorus the first time through. Was that right, y'all? Yes. Okay. So um, I'm still going to ask you to stand, but not right away because we're coming out of the silence. So I'll give you a little direction, a cue. And as always, in a field of unconditional love, you keep your boundaries. You don't feel like standing. You said, I'm not standing just because he said so. <laughs> I'll sit. That's fine. Sit. It's all perfect. Disclaimers aside now, take a deep breath if you uh, sense that that could be valuable or two. And notice how when we breathe consciously, the attention exits the mental structures temporarily. It, it comes more fully into now. Attention comes into this present moment, which is the only access point we have to this presence. This is it. This is where the only security there, there, there will ever be exists here and now in the presence and in this moment. So take, from this silent, still place within us all, we might want to look out at the mental structures and sort of bless them, 
emotional movements that may be occurring in us. Perhaps some amongst us had a difficult morning and something's still twisting or knotted up. We don't want to fix that or change that. We just let it be there in this field of presence. In a sense, we bless everything in us as it is. We wait for the grace to move out of this present moment, out of this source, this infinite, invisible dimension in which we live and move and have our being. That is what is animating us. It is the essence of our lives. It is who and what we are. Never been absent. Now we are present to it so that this this that is our true nature might emerge as we rest ever so gently now in the heart and in the stillness and in the silence in the silence Finding yourself in transition. <clears throat> we need to cut to the quick this morning, sum it up, get extract the essential point or points, and, and allow the reality underneath the points that are pointing to emerge and become a little more of what's actually living and animating us. Transi transitions are the fact of life. And um, sometimes in the human condition, let's describe it this way, consciousness being one and being bored with itself, decided to express itself into form. I'm being a little, using a little levity here. And see if it could wake up and remember itself while it was in the form. So far, it's not real happy with itself about how good a job it's doing. <laughs> I'm kidding, but see, the process, that is the process. This is the evolutionary process. Consciousness entering form, awakening to itself, realizing itself to be the one presence in a form. So that as we glance around the room and we see faces and eyes, we're not so much fooled anymore. We know it's the same one presence shining through and living as all beings. There is no exclusion to this. It's not possible. We can't have one and then parts that don't belong to the one. They're all the one. Whether they know it, whether they've remembered it, no matter what their behaviors are, no matter whether they meet our little tiny needs or not, they are the presence. This is the reality. So when we talk about standing on holy ground, we're really talking about allowing attention to be directed into this present moment. The whole foundation of the unity movement lies right here, as does the foundation of all truth. The truth is not in the mind. It's not in a future visualized time. The only power there is is now. This is the only security there is. This is the only ultimate reality. In the field of form, here's, here's a fact. There are opposites. One is birth, the other is death. Have you seen anybody avoid that yet? There are some funny little stories about so-called <laughs> beings that overcame that, but what overcame it was both born and died before the overcoming happened. So overcoming means realized ourselves to be this transcendent reality. Things moving through the field of form, coming into form and, and being born into form and die, this is the nature of the world of duality or form. You cannot have form except that the one becomes limited into a form. So as we grow up spiritually, what we want to find is that there is this ground in me that is relatively unperturbed. Actually, it's unperturbed, but so far that's a relative experience for most of us. 
This ground of our being is not perturbed at all. It knows there is no re- ultimate reality to either birth or death, that these are the movements of form. They rattle most of us because we're not, we're not really grounded yet in the truth. But this is happening now. This is the new earth. The new earth is the reflection of a new consciousness, a, a new heaven. So that means that we begin to sense and feel in this moment that we are this presence. We start to, it's subtle at first for most of us. Occasionally it takes a dramatic swing, bright white light, but we're not all going to be Paul on the road to Damascus. Most of us will sense into it very gently. Often we're driven to it by the circumstances that we have no other way to bear. That's kind of the hard way, the you know, the sort of carrot and stick process but we have this option we know the truth of it because we are this truth we can sense this reality that now is the time it's the only time we are sitting or standing in this presence now this is the holy ground this is the holy ground it's always right here and as we begin to you know, rather than yabber up here about that and just look directly into it and open to it, become childlike again and let it emerge into our awareness, we begin to sense it. And it then corrects the so-called problems. It provides, it guides, it inspires, it uplifts. This, this is the source. Return unto me, I said to you when I came, and I promised you, and it's probably the words might change, but the, but the pointers won't. This is the ministry that flows through this body and this personality at this point. It's basically saying, it's source saying, it's coming through this mouth, it's not Mark, saying, return unto me, and I will return unto thee. If you want to know this presence, if you want to experience it directly, one must exit constantly thinking about it and getting caught up in the streams of thought or emotion or circumstance. There has to be a return of attention to this presence. This is what it means when it says, make God first, have no other idols, etc., etc. When Moses leads the the children of Israel out of captivity, This is symbolic. We talked about it briefly. Let's recap the symbolism. Pharaoh represents the ego in us all. That basically tells us it's in charge and it's going to take care of everything, but but you must serve it. You don't get to be free. You get to do what it tells you. You come into this, and there's a great comfort. People came there because they were starving. Egypt had the food. But then the very place that saved them became their next prison. Captivity. So then emerging out of that is the archetype of the one of, of that aspect of us, of us that leads us out of captivity. It's hesitant. The story of Moses is, is a reluctant leader. Even that aspect of us is reluctant to be free. And now we're out in the wilderness. This is all transitions start with an ending, a void or wilderness and a new beginning. So we get out to the wilderness, the people are murmuring. They go get a golden calf to worship it rather than anything besides the infinite invisible, something I can see, you know, something I can believe in mentally. But what is the name of God as it's brought down from by Moses? I am that I am. This is radical. It's blasphemous, particularly in the deep south. I am a blasphemer and a heretic amongst you. I'm saying you are it. There is no other. We do not need any God's image. We can look at images and gateways and teachings and teachers and look at the model that was set for us by Jesus, but we cannot project the responsibility outside of this presence that I am and you are. This is the source. You are the source. There is no other freedom Anywhere. Nothing in the, in the world of form is stable. The world of form is by virtue of its very existence, unstable. Everything comes and goes and is largely fleeting. 
It seems like yesterday I was born into a family that shattered and a schizophrenic sister and a heroin addict brother and I hit the streets at 13. And now I'm 65 and something reached in the darkness and stood me up and told me, you know, to try to point out that along the way, this presence kept coming over me. It's, it's a fallible expression that comes through my mouth. I don't, I, I don't have it down perfectly. The ego structure still comes up here in this body and personality. We're not painting the picture of the next Christed being. You're it. You're the one. It picks broken, wounded, limited-looking structures to shine through. The only requirement to experience this shining and to be a vehicle for it is to give it your attention instead of something else. Let's get this narrowed down. It is a narrow gate. It is a very narrow gate. Wide is the way that leads to destruction, narrow to salvation. So this is old religious words that meant something else to most of us. But all it really means is the razor's edge is here in this moment now. It is the presence within us all. It is that which birthed you, animates you, beats your heart, guided you into your problems and dysfunction, and is now attempting to lift you out of them. It all happens from within. There is no external source. There is no external authority. This is what we find out in, through transition. Time and again, we find that our control over external circumstances, situations, and outcomes is meager. There's a lot of snake oil salesmen telling you you can create your own reality. I haven't found one single person yet that did it. We are co-creators with the source, but it's doing the creating. Who's hearing that message? If I am the presence of God and the I am rises as ideas, divine ideas and expressions and visions, then it will come also with the resources to manifest them effortlessly, gently, carefully, and without anxiety. But when the little me, the false self, thinks that it's going to go create things the way it wants them to, tell me where the success stories on this are. Where are they? Even the ones that happen, you know, you can manifest stuff while you're still in dysfunction, but when you go home at night, you're still having fights with your hubby or your wifey or your kitties <laughs> or your boss. You know, I mean, it's, it's, the law works. Yes, you can manifest, but, but awaken from the dream. This is the call. This is the call. And there's really, it gets so simple. We can try a million things, but unless they point us back into presence, into a direct experience of the source of our own being, unless the power emerges from within here, then it recreates a new form of bondage. You can move from this cell over here, which is dank and dirty, to this little cell with clouds and angels on the ceiling. But it's still a cell. This truth was meant to be realized from within you. You are the light. That's the message. And it's understandable. There's a heart in this message as it comes to me, a kind of a mercy and understanding that if consciousness decided to get lost in form and forget who it was, I'm not speaking. To, I, sometimes my eyes just lock on to someone. This doesn't mean I'm particularly picking you out and I'm not sensing anything. It's okay. We just we just were making good eye contact and that happens. But but if it can if it if in its evolutionary movement it enters form and forgets itself, which clearly it did, then that must have, it must it must be part of the process, huh? So self judgment, self condemnation, or any kind of judgment or condemnation about how awake we haven't been or think we are not now is more futility. It's a way of staying unconscious and judging an eternal evolutionary awakening of spirit in form. We don't want to do that. We want, we want to just rest now, rest into the presence. Really rest back in, let attention flow. Patiently open to it again. I say over and over again, find just a few more moments of stillness and silence. 
I'm not saying, you know, get into some big, rigorous meditation routine where the ego is now going to become a meditator. I am now a meditator. I meditate X. You know, now I have a nice, new, spiritualized ego (laughs) who thinks of itself as more holy and more spiritual. That's not it. It's just attention, direct, immediate attention flowing away from form into the formless dimension. This is the the critical distinction for us all to make, and I'm trying to learn to make it more and more with you. Don't don't for a moment imagine that I'm not saying I don't get caught thinking about form, worrying about form, imagining I better control that form. Yes, I get sucked into that just like you do. But I also know the answer is not in form. Form can only correct itself and become more benign and more supportive if that correction can flow from here in any eternal, peaceful, truly joyful way. So just a little more attention flowing away from form. This is the, this is the cornerstone of all religious teachings. We say uh, in Christianity, uh, we, we, we get the piece of scripture that says, um, hi. <laughs> The stone that was rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Do we think that's about a guy named Jesus 2,000 years ago? Do we still think that? What, what, is this, what is being rejected by the human condition this present moment? I'm rushing to the next one. I'm using this moment to get to one that I believe will be better. Or I'm using this one to protect myself to keep something bad from happening in the future. Or I'm using this moment to condemn and crucify myself for some imagined guilty thing I did in the past. This is what we, we slaughter. The only holy place there is, which is now. Instead, we need to come to it gently. I sometimes say symbolically with... Bended knee and bowed head. Come back to the present moment. Just give it a little more attention. Let it have an opportunity, as I suspect it is for us all, because we, when I say these things, we, we're doing it. We're looking into now. We're looking into the depths of our being, infinite, eternal, indestructible, untainted, ever innocent. There is no truth to condemnation. All of our human judgments are errors. All of them are projections about how the world needs to look later, who we think we're fixing and saving from our limited perspectives. Check again. Is the source conscious in you? Can you sense and feel it? Are you letting it move through you? Are you letting it form the new thoughts? We speak of this as divine ideas in unity. When they emerge directly from source, they come clothed with power and confidence. We're always in transition. And this is the promised land. The promise is here. It's not something coming. We're looking everywhere but the one place it is as human beings mostly. Here we have a little training now already. But look here. Look now. See how often we are distracted away from now to something beyond now. And you will wonder no longer at why the dysfunction of the human condition accelerates as it does. Watch people going down the street. (sighs) Anywhere but here. I'm headed somewhere else that's more important than here and now. And as we greet each other, how often are we, even I am engaged with the staff. Sometimes they're trying to talk to me in my mind. And I'm not fully present. This is the training. This is where that which they call the Christ exists of which there is only, by the way, one. The second coming means this consciousness emerges in the human condition. It makes new beings of us. 
nothing about the ego's dream of what this new world will be, look like is true. It has no idea. The whole point is to let go of our ideas and let the new ideas emerge from source. They vibrate with power. They move us in the now. They don't necessarily tell us about next year. They give, we're often kept on a need-to-know basis because we're being trained to be present, not be all that concerned about the future. Huh. Wouldn't you think? When can we be happy? Can we be happy later? Has anyone ever met later? Have you ever been there? Joy, peace, the presence is here in the present moment. That's, that's, the, that's what we're here trying to help each other remember to do. And watch as we're lifted. We were made into the light that shines into the world. I, I know that places where we've been trapped and contracted and felt limited forever, my forever, but throughout this lifetime, can be erased in the blink of an eye. How many of you have had a power touch you and you were never the same? You see, you know, all of you. You didn't get to unity just because it sounded. Every once in a while somebody comes to check us out. <clears throat> and report that, yes, indeed, the minister announced he's a heretic and a blasphemer. <laughs> it's true. You know what heretic means, don't you? Just don't, don't agree with the church. You're right. I don't. I don't. I am not going to teach someone that the power is outside of them or belongs to a, a hierarchy. It's within you. It's within you. You're it. Tag. You're it. <laughs> Let it shine. Feel into it. Let it live you. And then let's step out of the mind. And when we sing, sometimes the mind doesn't think as much. Let's, let's sing the song again. The words are just pointers, aren't they? They're pointing, but there's a reality back of them, huh? I stand all service. Y'all can stand again if you want. Yeah, let's all stand.